Hey everyone, John Henry here from Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Today we're going to be taking a look at break-even zones of interest, understanding where others have entered and what they're going to be doing, uh, and kind of what they're going through. And understanding that can give you a huge, potentially the missing part of the story that you need to find and execute the trade. So what I'm looking at here are these zones of interest in the sense of entries where buyers or sellers came in. Now, obviously, for every buyer, there's a seller. I don't mean every single tick in the market. We're specifically looking for, in this case, trapped traders, right? Now, a trapped trader, they might have been here, but notice the market came back and allowed them to get out of break even. So the final trapped traders, the buyers who bought above this bull bar, they're the ones that are stuck. Now, there are a few things uh, that can happen around this. We can use some math to figure out what they might be doing with their averages. If they bought up here, their stop probably would have either been below that bull bar or underneath the low. And either way, if they were looking to accumulate with a one-to-one, -one, meaning they bought one contract here and they buy another one down here to average down, which although you and I uh, might not have the trillion dollar accounts to do that kind of stuff with at the level that these market makers can, that's how they approach the markets. So if they had to buy up there and they got stuck, they can simply just buy a little bit more. We're not in emergency mode. There's no reason to go more than one-to-one. -one. So what's likely to happen? Well, there are two areas that I want to watch. I want to watch where the stop is, assuming that they're going to buy some. And I also want to know where their entry was, knowing that they bought some. And what I want to do is I want to find the distance between those two. So if they bought one tick above the high, that would be at 90.50. And if their stop was one tick below the low, that would be 86. So what I'm looking for is a 50% difference between the two. That's halfway. If I buy one here and I buy one here and I divide those by two, my break-even point is this dashed black line. And what happens? The market comes up, it hits their break-even point, and begins rejecting. Now, initially, it didn't look like they were really that nervous. But when it started coming back underneath, notice where they went to? They came back up, and the rest of the break-evens were filled, and the market collapsed back to the downside. These break-even points can be massive turning points. Sometimes they can just be small little nuance moves. But either way, they can give you a huge amount of information. And the longer they've been trapped, realistically the less likely it's going to have a response. That's what you would think because, well, chances are they've probably gotten out of the trade already, you know, months ago. But some of those setups that you'll find of trapped traders on the daily chart, they might still be trapped. Even if it doesn't make any sense to you and I, they might still be trapped there. And that's usually where you get really, really good location bounces. Another good one was right here, right? We have a potential bull flag. The buyers tried getting a breakout move to the upside. And it looked like the buyers were failing. So what happens? Sellers come in and they try to drive the market down. And what ended up happening for the sellers? Well, all they got was a scalp, maybe, and then it rotates all the way back up and they are now trapped. So what's going to happen here? Well, that area is going to be a zone of interest and we can utilize math along the way just like we could before. So let's say if we zoom this in a little bit closer, and actually let me do this just so I don't mess with anything. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And then we can really crank in there. All right. So we're looking at sellers who would have been stuck at the bottom. So let me get rid of all the drawing objects. And then we can dig in. Uh, okay, that didn't help a whole lot. Let me just do it. Uh, <laughs> let me just do it this way then. All right. Uh, so looking at the overall movement that we have, we have this nice drive down. And sellers obviously got stuck. Now, they rotated all the way back up. So what are we looking for? Well, I want to see sellers coming in underneath that low. So their entry point is one tick underneath. Their stop is one tick above the highs. So their 50% zone would have been right here, but look what happened. The market went ripping through it. A lot of times when that happens, they're not going to be looking to do anything for a while, right? Because they've already increased the risk. There's no sense in increasing the risk anymore when the market's running away from them. So we're waiting for a really strong indication. Here, we try to pull back. The buyers try going back up. The anticipated move here, strong leg up, we're looking for a second leg higher. But the buyers fail, the buyers fail, the buyers fail, the buyers fail, and then we trap up above this big giant bull bar, and it rolls back over after an exact double top. That is a very logical three press lower high that's going to be rotating back to the downside, and sellers will sell more there. Now, what this is going to do for their average is if we bring up a calculator here, 
pop this calculator up. So 32.88 quarter plus 32.82.50 plus 32.79.50. Divided by 3, because there are 3 positions. 32.83, and we'll round, because remember, they're short, so we're going to round down. 32.83 quarter is where their break-even is. 32.83 quarter is right there. Now, the market comes very, very close to it and already starts showing response, and then it finally floods through it. Now, this is where things get really interesting, because that's just a one-to-one. -one. But remember, it was very obvious that they were wrong. So if they believe that they're wrong, what will end up happening instead is they'll look for a three to one entry, meaning that for every one contract that they have, they're going to look to add three times as much. In this case, they came up to that area with, let's just say, two contracts, one and one. And now we're up here. Well, a three to one, which is where we're going to see a lot of traders looking to try to get out of a move if they believe they're wrong. That's where it's going to get very interesting because now it's 3288 quarter, but that's times six. Remember, one and one, we've got two total, and then three to one is six, plus 32.82.50, plus the 32.79.50. That gives us a total of eight contracts, right? So the average price is 32.86, and again, rounding down 25. So 32.86.25 is right there. Now, if you want to know why the low of the range began setting in here, that's likely because that was right around the area where seller's break-evens were to try to get out of the trade. And even when it started cracking through it, look at all of the resistance and support that formed on top of that area. And when it was finally able to get back through it, then they ran off to the other break-evens. And notice where they went. They went down to the original entry point and found a huge amount of support, enough to roll the market right back up again. So keeping an eye on where these break-even points are and where these traders are potentially stuck from or where they're looking to maybe get out or average in or average out can give us a huge amount of information, and that can be the difference between a winning trade or you yourself getting stuck in the trap. Hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jhb at sssftg.com. Of course, as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything new. Throw in any comments that you have down in the comment section below. That might end up being the next video if you have a video idea for us. Otherwise, though, I hope you had a great day of trading, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks.